Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of This Organized Life Podcast. I'm your host, Lori Palau, and we are continuing on our series on behind the scenes of today. We're going to go behind the scenes of this podcast. And if you remember back on our 200th episode, we talked a little bit about the kind of why I started a podcast and we kind of gave a little bit of a backstory into how the whole podcasting evolution of this organized life came about. But on today's episode, I want to talk a little bit more about the nuts and bolts, about what goes into creating this podcast, what goes into booking guests, what goes into producing the show, what goes into the post-production and the marketing of it, all the things, all the moving parts. So I invited or coerced, depending on how you want to look at it, my amazing podcast producer, Don Jackson from the Raven Media Group to be my co-host today. And I asked him, I said, you can ask me whatever you want. I have no idea what questions he has prepared. Um, I have a few talking points that I want to talk about, but other than that, This is probably the least prepared I've ever been for a podcast episode in 231 episodes. In 231 episodes, it's probably the least prepared I've been. So without further ado, I'm going to bring Don out to the show and let him introduce himself. So welcome, Don. Thank you, Lori. Thank you for having me on the show today. And for anybody that is watching this show on YouTube, not just listening to it, You're in for a treat because Don is usually the man behind the screen and he's, as you could tell, has an amazing voice, but does not often like to be on camera. And he agreed to show his handsome self to our listeners or viewers, I should say. So thank you, Don, for making that exception for us. You are welcome. And thank you are too kind. I do have a face for radio and a voice for silent movies. So this is different for both of us today. You know, know, usually super fun. I'm just here quietly lurking. Don, make sure. Well, tell everybody what you, I mean, Don, make sure that I sound as good as I possibly can. Let's be honest. He makes sure that our guests sound amazing. That's just in a quick nutshell of just 10,000 foot view of what he does, but tell everybody about yourself. Well, I run the Raven Media Group. And if you want, we can do a quick kind of rundown of how a start of an episode goes, if you want. Yeah, sure. Why don't we do that? So usually what happens is you will, we will get the guests on. Mm -hmm. We used to do Skype. Now we do Zoom. Mm -hmm. Um, And then um, you'll do a little back and forth with the guests. We do that to get them comfortable. Mm -hmm. Um, to also gauge if they're a talker or a non-talker. And while we're doing that, then we usually, I'm doing a sound check um, when they're speaking. So, you know, we're checking out what they're going to sound like. So the first thing I'll do is I'll say, um, this is a conversation between you and Lori. So it'll be a good back and forth. It could be in front of a cup of coffee or in a Corona times. It could be alcohol. We don't know. Um, And then I'll tell them in under 30 seconds, give me a brief synopsis of how your morning was. And the reason why we pick how your morning was is because usually that's the most hectic time. And that helps us for two, two ways. That helps us decide what the stressors in their voice sounds like. And that helps us later on in the episode when we know a, uh, a person that we're interviewing is irritated with their line of questioning or doesn't really want to answer a question. That helps us there. Um, and then it also helps us figure out how they sound just in general. So usually if they're just using their laptop microphone, we'll go, that sounds horrible. I'll say that in my head. I won't say that out loud. I was like, we don't say that to their face. No, we don't ever say that to their face. And then I'll say, do you have at least headphones with a microphone on it? And that's the minimum of what we like to have um, for our guests. Because we want them to sound good. Because if they sound good, then you're going to want to hear what they have to say. Um, And then after that, I'll say, do you have any more questions for me? If not, Lori this guest is all yours. And that's usually how we start. And then you'll say that you're going to, you know, give them a brief intro and then we'll go right into the episode. But that's basically how we start an episode. And I know a lot of people when they hear the podcast, and I know we're probably getting ahead of ourselves, but when they hear the podcast, 
they think that it's just you showing up, hitting record and talking to a guest. And it's never, ever, ever that easy. <laughs> Usually it's, um, and you, you have to work sometimes. And my job is to like, we have some guests that were just hard to get something out of because they just weren't a good interview. And so it's my job to tell you, Hey, let's try this. Let's try a different tact, you know, things like that as the interview is going on. But usually it goes really well because of the preparation you do before, you know, the actual podcast starts. So how about we, we talk about the why of the podcast and then we'll do a little bit of, uh, um, and this is actually how sometimes we, we do an episode where Mm -hmm. we do prep work, where we talk about what we're going to talk about, how it's going to work, things like that. Um, so we'll do, we'll just do a, a dry run of what that would look like. So before that, let's talk about the why of the podcast. And I'm about to make a huge interviewing error by giving you a compound question, which okay. is never a good thing. I do it all the time. You know yeah. that. You know, I've I know. always I always do compound I know. questions. I know. But at, usually what I tell people is, you know, just give them the one and then do a follow-up. But for this one, I know you can handle it. So okay. give me the why. And then, and I know this, I know the answer. I just want to hear you say it. Has that why changed and has that changed the format of the podcast? Okay. So the why I started a podcast was to have another platform to be able to share my messaging. So at the time when I started my podcast, I was blogging and I was doing in-person speaking. And obviously I saw clients, but that was primarily the method that I was using to communicate with people. And somebody had approached me about starting a podcast. I really wasn't well-versed in the podcast world, didn't know really what went into it and said, if somebody can help walk me through this, so I don't have to learn the technical side of things, I can easily turn essentially what would be like a blog content into an interview. And I said, I'll give it a shot and see how it goes. And if it works, great. And that was sort of the expectation that I set for myself. And this was with a different producer. And I found I really, really liked it. I enjoyed connecting with people. I felt it was a more intimate level. I was able to reach people. And shockingly, people listened. That was really surprising to me. And so then it started growing. And then I started having guests on. Originally, I didn't have guests on. And that in and of itself changed the dynamic because even to kind of go back and talk about like, and maybe we'll get into, I don't want to mess up your flow, but the pre, like how to even figure out what your content calendar is, is like part of the job before you even show up for the interview. Anybody that's put together a content calendar for social media, if you're an entrepreneur of any type, um, that you're doing the same thing for your podcast. You're looking at what are the dates that I'm going to release episodes. What do I want to talk about? What does the flow want to look like? Do I want to have guests? If so, who are the guests? So I have a now fast forward four years, we do like planning meetings and sometimes I'll do them with Don. I will also do it with my team and say, what are topics that people are engaging about on social media? What are we want to, what are people talking about in our Facebook group, this organized life? What do what do we want to talk about? What's going on in my life that I think this is going on with me? I'd like to share it with other people. So that's really how I develop my content calendar. And then I literally have a Google sheet. It's nothing fancy that I color code and I have every week's episode. And as we book guests and I come up with like themes, I will block that off and say, okay, we're doing a theme on this. We need to go find a guest that fits that bill and we'll start our outreach. And then that's how it evolves from there. So the second part of your question, which is, has the show changed? Totally it's changed. I don't think my core messaging has changed. I want to give people strategies, permission, empowerment, like confidence to be able to tackle any area of clutter, stress, organization with their own life or within their family. 
but we've expanded and gone deeper with how we're delivering that content. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Like, okay. No, and I, I guess the, the follow-up question would be, how, how do you feel about that? I love it. And as long as people keep listening, I'm going to keep doing it. Cause sometimes I'm like, I'm doing something like for when we did the Enneagram series, you knew I was very interested in this. You're like, I don't know what this is, but you're paying me. So go with it. I think that's pretty much what Don was thinking. And I said, I really am. I think that there's a lot of value in this. I'm working on this framework, connecting the dots between clutter and the Enneagram. I'd like to do a series on it. So we talked about it wound up booking guests with different Enneagram types. That was, that was a job in and of itself of saying, okay, we need to find people that are this particular Enneagram type that are willing to come on the show, share their stories, all of that. And then I do prep work before each guest. So I have like here, it's like this for anybody that's watching. I have talking points. So it's not a scripted show, but I will put together kind of talking points so that the guest knows the direction that we're going to have the conversation go. And, but it's a fluid, organic conversation. And sometimes we get to all the talking points. Sometimes we get to three of them and then some, it'll may take on a life of itself, but specifically like with the Enneagram one, I said, hopefully this is going to kind of be like a testing ground for me to see if people like this, if they listen to these interviews, then maybe this is something that I can deliver more of. And I'm working on this course and it'll give me a precursor if, if people are going to be interested in taking this course. If nobody's listening to the podcast for free, nobody's going to buy my course that's paid. <laughs> so I was pleasantly surprised when we were like, wow, these are some of your greatest downloads. So knowing that this is obviously popular content. And so it helps me in other areas of my business from a strategic standpoint to say, okay, what are topics that resonate with people? And you and I do this like once a quarter, we'll sit down and say, what are the, what were the, some of your more popular uh, shows in the past quarter or the past year? And let's deliver more of that. Or how can we, how can we expand on that? to give people what they want to hear. So when, when I first took over as your producer, you were, you were at the 20 minute mark, mm -hmm. you know, and then um, the reason why you wanted to make the change is because you wanted to, to grow that number. Um, and we were at the 30 minute mark. And I think a couple of times you're at the 40 minute mark. Uh, for I, the kept first year. I kept inching yeah. up and you're like, Lore, get it together. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. I think, I think a lot of people don't understand for a successful podcast, you have to evolve. Mm -hmm. So your message has, the core message has been the same, but the way that message is delivered has changed um, since, you know, I've been here with you and I'm sure it's been since the beginning of your show. Um, same thing with how long the material is. And do you feel like you like that longer, time frame to have the chat with somebody or do you miss the days of those short little chats i'm happy with how things are now um i'm happy i'm happy with how it started because it made it really digestible for me for a lot of reasons i wanted to start it slow first of all because i was brand new to this medium and just to kind of get some experience under my belt i was able to really get in and pack these little punches and get some content out there in these quick digestible bite-sized chunks. And I love that. And I have no regrets about that. But then I actually took the advice and there was never an intention at when I first started, like, oh, I'm going to start at 20 and then I'm going to gr gradually expand and make it longer. But I listened to the audience and I, people were writing in going, great episode, wish it were longer, wish you could have more, wish that there was, you know, we could dive a little deeper. And so I just started taking cues from the people that were coming back week after week. And then strategically 
from a business perspective, I was like, if I want to grow this podcast, I need to be able to take on sponsorships and I need to be able to deliver more content and to be able to deliver quality content. I'm already a fast talker. Can't really talk much faster. So I need to be able to, you know, have a little bit more of a runway to be able to deliver my message. And so it's, I didn't want to shock people that were used to a 20 minute show and all of a sudden jump to an hour. I thought that was just, that was just too drastic. So that's how we kind of slowly started at 30 and then again, inched up to 45. And I think now we're, you know, we're right around the, the one hour mark. And I like to give people some sort of dependability and knowing what they're expecting when they come to the show. Like it's going to be this amount of length. So would you say this is the same approach you take with a client when you're getting them to, to do decluttering and stuff like that, and then to organize? Well, you can't go from zero to perfect. Oh, oh, for sure. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, I think, again, we have to set these little wins along the way and make sure that we're on track and then make changes and tweaks and pivots as time goes on. And then as we get more confident with our space and we start to build some momentum, that's when you can continue to tackle bigger projects or work for longer increments of time. So yes, I definitely think that there's, that there's an analogy between that, but I get a lot of calls from people about, or emails from people about like the process, you know, the process of planning a podcast and like, I'm a, I'm good at project management. Like that's kind of what my, that's kind of my jam. So I enjoy that part of it. But that's something that not all your clients enjoy, right? Like, cause a lot of them outsource the whole, like I, I book all the guests. I collect all the intake forms. I do all the show notes. I have a te- like you produce it. And I have my team that like pushes it out on social media and puts it out on the blog and does all that, the technical part of it. But I'm doing all of the intake content creation all that stuff. And that's a lot for anybody that wants to do a podcast and do it well. You either have to do that yourself or outsource it to somebody like Don. <laughs> yeah. And, and actually that leads well into my next question because it's um, like I said, a lot of people don't know a lot of the work that goes on in a podcast. So an hour long podcast, usually just for, for my end, just for editing is usually three hours um, because you have to put does Oz, you listen to the episode quite a few times, but just to get that hour of content, it probably takes for you to one, get the guests because you're playing back and forth emails, even though if it's, it's one email for 15 minutes, you're writing it and corresponding that day for some guests, it could be, you know, an easy, Oh, do you want to be on the show? Yeah. Okay. Here's the intake. Here's this schedule the time. Then you're good. That's probably three hours total. Um, of actual work time, but it's, it's a lot of back and forth of five minutes here, 10 minutes there. And then you have some guests that are just a pain to get in because, you know, it's just back and forth correspondence that you're just for the time you're doing it. It's not that long for that initial time, but the time total that you're doing, it could be four or five, six hours spread over, you know, a month or a two month period, which doesn't seem like a lot to some people, but it is a lot because you're constantly doing that. And that's just for one guest. So then after you do that initial intake, then you got to create the questions. Mm -hmm. So then that takes some time. Um, And then from there, you're creating that outline that you're talking about. So you want it to flow. So you have to pick, you know, things that, you know, are going to have a good flowing conversation. So let's talk about that a little bit. Let's talk about what you think an average guest would look, take to get them in and what that looks like for you? Well, it's twofold. So there are times where I will know I want to have a specific person on. And if I know them, it's obviously quicker. And we have a, I've automated our scheduling process. So we have a, we use a platform called Acuity. Um, Some people use Calendly. There's a lot of different ones. So 
basically I send a link with our availability. So I've avoided now the back and forth of I could do this time where I can't do this time. And our intake form is attached to that. So once I finally can communicate with a guest, they can schedule the link directly. So that part is, is pretty seamless, but a lot of times I don't know who the guest is like I, or I'm pitching somebody for the first time. And so that process can be, I'm trying to find somebody. I'm trying to find the, who's in charge of their press or who's their, you know, who's their publicist or, you know, the best way to connect up with person. So even to find who that appropriate guest is, can be a couple weeks process for me. Once I know who the person is, then the scheduling part of it isn't is easier. Um, what was the original question? So that could be, yeah, I mean, that can be anywhere from, you know, a quick phone call or email to me looking at somebody for, you know, me looking to do a topic and it being a month before I find the right guest. And you're doing the research when you're doing it. After you get the guest, you actually do research on oh, the guest. Oh, yeah. To and that. oh, absolutely. And I try to research people at least on a top line basis before I pitch them. Like I want to know a little bit about them because I know people will pitch me and it's clear the people that don't know anything about me and people that have like done their homework. And I'm not saying you have to know every single thing about me or about your guest, but you want to be able to speak in some specifics to a person. And I don't want somebody if I'm going to be asking somebody to take time out of their day to be on my show, um, obviously we're going to be promoting them and all that, but I want to be able to provide as much value to them and make it worth their while. And so whether that means I'm sharing information about if it's somebody who's like a, you know, a big name person sharing information about our stats, who our audience is, trying to customize it, what the connection point would be between their work and what we're trying to do. Or if it's just somebody that I heard their story or I read their book or whatever it is and just said, hey, I love what you're doing. I think you'd be a great guest. Would you be interested? So there is definitely research. And then once I book them, then there's, then we dive another layer and do a little bit more work so that we can ask thoughtful questions. We can ask meaningful questions that they're going to walk away going, wow, that was worth my while. That person did their homework. It's funny because as your producer, I can tell, you know, a lot of our listeners will hear you call one of our guests a friend and behind the scenes. I don't know if they know some of these guests you're just meeting for the first time, but I think <laughs> for you, you've done so much research on them. You feel like you are friends with that guest. Okay. Can I tell you a funny story? Sure. So my older daughter, Zoe, who is my behind the scenes kid, she's not the one that like is as vocal as Logan. That one of her biggest pet peeves, I call, I do, I call everybody my friend, even in real life. Like I will, we'll go out and, you know, we could go out to a local store and I'll be like, oh, my new friend or our waitress is my new friend. And when Zoe was living here, but like before she went to college, I would come home and be like, oh, we went out to dinner and I have a new friend. And she would go, they are not your friend. You just met them. But in my mind, I'm like, no, they're my friend. I'm friends with them. And she's like, they are not your friend. So when you said that, it's true. I do. But I like, I think everybody's my friend. And again, I do research on these people and I, I have a snapshot into their life where I do feel a connection with them. But yeah, I, um, that's like one of Zoe's biggest pet peeves is me calling people my friends. I think you've only fangirled twice since I've been your producer. And it's actually been in this last year. Do you remember who? I know who. Do you remember who? I, I do know who. So Rachel was first. Yeah. She, she was, you, you were a fangirl of her. Mm -hmm. Rachel Cruz for you yes. guys. Yes. And then the second was easily the biggest fan girl I think I've ever seen you do. For who, Joey? No, it was it during the Enneagram. Who's the biggest fan girl that I had during? It wasn't who? over a girl, but you were. Oh, fangirl. over Ian, over yes. Ian Cron. Well, yes. yeah, because he wrote the road back to you, which is like my Enneagram Bible. Mm -hmm. So yes, yes, I fan girled over him. Yeah. Yes, for sure. I think what was great about it is you were excited and super nervous all at the same time to have that conversation with him. And it didn't show at all. 
But as your producer, I could tell that you were just like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God. Well, I didn't want to it's, blow it. I was yeah. like, oh my gosh. I was yeah. nervous. I no, think if he was physically care. there, you would have had him sign like 40,000 things. I, I think. It's possible. Yeah. Maybe not 40,000, but Close. I definitely would have had him sign my book. Yeah. Not my book, his book that I own. <laughs> yeah. I think you really want to be friends with him. And he well, was a very sweet man. He was. I, he was I wanted Rachel. Man. I wanted Rachel to be like, "Oh my gosh, you're so awesome! I think you need to be a Ramsey personality, and we need to have you on our sh- on, uh, and you need to come on and be the clutter expert at Ramsey Solutions." That didn't happen. Hasn't happened but yet. I, no, it hasn't happened yet. I don't know oh. if it's going to happen. Um, but that that deep down inside is kind of what I was like hoping she'd be like, "Oh my God, she's so great. We need her here." I didn't tell you that they hired me, did I? They did. No, I did. You moving to Nashville? No, they, that didn't happen. Um, but, but yeah, no, I try he, not to. I try know. not to. Fa- I try not to fangirl over too many guests. Yeah. I try yeah. to play cool. That one. Ian was the one that was like, I could tell evident. you were. I could tell, but that's part of my job. But it was funny because. Usually I have to monitor our guests to make sure because we sometimes have guests that get really nervous being on the show. And there's been a couple of times where I've had to come on and just tell them, take a breath, relax. You're okay. We're having yeah, fun. There's like five just, people that listen to our show. Yeah, what are you talking you, about? They don't need to good. be nervous. It's not five people, people. I, <laughs> our fans know it's not five people. You put a couple of zeros behind it, then yes, that is, that is our, our reach. But you know, we've had to do it. And that was the only time where I almost had to go, uh, Lori, you need to take a breath. You okay? Mm. You, you, you all right? Just shows, so, yeah, him, just shows was, I'm human fun. like everybody else. You know. Would you say that was probably your favorite guest or your two favorite guests? You know what's interesting? Actually, and I, I know this is going to sound like super hokey. I mean, Are you I, say I, Gail? I, no, yeah, I love when Gail's on. Um, I like like everyday real people. Like, not that he's not an everyday real person, but I think some of our greatest guests were like the most underrated people that like nobody's heard of. They don't necessarily have a huge platform that I just really enjoy getting to know people. So yeah, on a personal level, like, did I love talking to Ian Cron? Absolutely. Did I love talking to Rachel Cruz? Yeah. I mean, that's great that I can do that, but having people that open up to me like on a personal level and that really kind of share some level of vulnerability and something that they've gone through. I really like to me, those are the conversations that I connect with. And I, I like to be able to talk to those people. So I like all of our guests. I'm kind of picky about like who we have on our show, to be honest. So, but I, I think we we have to take a break though. Don't we? Oh, we do. Yes. We have to go break. All right, when we come back, you can ask me some more questions. All right, we'll be right back. Okay. All right, Lori, we're back. That was an awesome. I, I love your ads, by the way. They're amazing. Oh, I wish thank we knew you. who did those. I, you know what? Listen, that is your brainchild, all of our ads. So thank you. So thank you for everybody who listens, actually listens to them and doesn't fast forward through them. So thank you. Thank you for that. Um, You know what I was thinking? We should probably talk about how often we record. Yeah, let's do that. So that's changed too in the evolution of this organized life. So when my show was shorter and I used to do 20 minute episodes and I used to record in a studio, I batched recorded, meaning I would record once a month and I would batch all four to five episodes of that coming month and record for like two to three hours. By the end, I didn't want to talk to anybody. My voice was hoarse the whole nine, but we would do that. And then I would just do the show notes and everything each week as the episodes would get ready to drop. But we don't do that. We record one to two episodes every week. We have one recording day a week. We only make an exception 
typically if a client is in like a completely different time zone, like we've interviewed people in Australia and New Zealand and like places that it's the middle of the night there. So we've adjusted our recording schedule and occasionally we will record in an evening or a weekend if we have somebody that um, has like a full-time job and like can't get away, it has to be at an office or something. And But by and large, we record. Thursdays are our recording day. Thursdays are our drop day. So Thursday is podcast day for SBO. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about the change that you went through from being in a studio setting to being literally in your home then what that change was and talk about how you felt when you made that change from a studio setting, which is it's for, for people that don't know a studio setting is very quiet. There's not a lot of noise going on. There's a separation between the person recording and you. Um, and I think usually you used to record with Erica at the studio. Mm -hmm. Um, and one of the things that we talked about is before we had a conversation about making the change and having me come on was you were so used to studio life. You didn't think there was going to be a difference, but you thought there'd be a stark difference between the two and you didn't think it would work. And the other thing was, is I think the thing that was attractive to you is you didn't have to sit in one place for such a long period of time. So let's talk about that change. And then, kind of how you set up your home studio and what that looks like. So I was so nervous about making the transition because I mean, now we do, we post our, our episodes on YouTube as well, but my sound quality is all I have <laughs> really. I mean, content of course, but there's nothing for me that's worse than listening to a podcast with poor sound quality. So one of the things that I loved about being in the studio was you're in a controlled environment and I had state-of-the-art equipment that I used and I knew that there was not going to be any distraction and I was really nervous. Like, here I am, I'm going to be working from home and I have a dog and there's a garbage truck that's outside and, you know, all of these things. So you were like ultra patient with me and showed me that, no, you are actually really good at your job and can make my sound quality comparable to being in the studio. And so as soon as I saw it that first, as soon as I heard it, I should say, the first time it put my mind at ease, like anything, it's the fear of the unknown. Um, logistically, I loved the idea of being able to be at home because the studio that we recorded at was an hour away. And again, it was once a month, so it wasn't bad, but we would block the entire day. We would drive up, we'd record, then we usually grab a quick bite for lunch and head back. And that was the entire day. So when we made the switch to record from home, it gave me more flexibility with things that I could do with my schedule. So that was appealing, but I was also nervous because I was so used to for like a year plus before we switched over of doing my batch recording that I was being like, I would have so many, so many episodes kind of like in like banked up that it gave me this cushion and this comfort level where I was nervous at first. Of, Am I going to have enough content? Am I going to be able to do it? And here we are. And it works. It was all that worry for nothing. Cause again, like anything, we got on a schedule and I, some months I'm booked out three months in advance and some months I'm booked out a month in advance, but I'm always have enough guests in the pipeline that I'm never recording for like the next week. I know you have some guests, some clients that do, but that would stress me out. I can't be that far in it. You know, I have to have some cushion. I think this last month alone, we were recorded what once. Yeah. You were like, is everything okay? <laughs> yeah. Cause, and, but it goes to show how much we had banked that we were like, there was no worry that we've missed a recording here and there. Well, it was funny because I think COVID actually, I had all of these episodes and this is where like 
again, you kind of have to roll with the punches of life. So before COVID hit, we had had episodes that we had recorded. And then obviously the world shut down and we immediately started pumping out stuff that was happening kind of in real time. So we just said, all right, well, let's just pause on publishing those episodes, even though we had recorded them, because we should really be talking about things that are really relevant that people are dealing with now. So we then came up with probably two months worth of content that was kind of COVID-ish related, organizing from home, virtual school, working from home, setting up a home office, all of these things that we, like everybody was facing. So we just had all of that other content that was just, just kind of sitting patiently in the sidelines to get released. And so when, then we started pumping that out and then I was like, okay, well, I don't want to be six months out because then I feel like I want our stuff to have some level of current relevancy. And so now we're back to like a more normal for us schedule, which is about booking like a month or two out. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. I think, I think to have a good podcast, you have to be able to, to stay relevant. And I preferably like to have at least two or three in the can for a client Mm -hmm. if we're dropping weekly just in case, because as you know, and I know sometimes things come up. I mean, there was a recording session we had where I actually had to back out of our recording session because um, Gavin had an allergic reaction to something. Oh, right. Um, I forgot yeah. about that. And and it's happened before, you know, mm-hmm. where, where some days we, we miss a recording session. But I think what's funny is I'm not sure who gets more mad or ups- I wouldn't say mad. I would say upset with sound quality. Okay. I think I'm more vocal about it. And you probably like, you're probably just as annoyed because it's your work. And I know that you have like, yeah, you're more, but you are just more. Well, usually I'm I'm, I'm trying to usually trying to calm you down a little bit and say, it's going to be okay. Cause we've had the (laughs) biggest one is when we made the switch to sounder and this isn't a bad thing about sounder. It's just, it was a struggle when we first moved to sounder because yes. um, we had some, we had some growing pains with them as far as getting content out. And sound and- is a hosting platform for anybody that's listening going what's sounder. So when you have a podcast, you have to host it somewhere, just like you have a website, you have to host it somewhere. And so we made a switch from Libsyn, which is one of the larger hosting platforms to a smaller growing platform, but this company called sounder who I really like, and I get a lot of one-on-one attention and they have a lot of great stuff, but they were newer and there were some kinks that we needed to work out. Which was really hard because it was just about the time we were doing the rollout for the 200th episode. Which you were more stressed about that. You were very I was, stressed. And I was like, I kept telling them because there was, I think there was, there was four of us on an email chain when we had an episode that, that didn't go out right. I think that was the one time I've actually ever in the email, it probably seemed like I was raising my voice, but it was one of the times where I was like, no, listen, this needs to get fixed. I don't care who, who messed this up. Let's get it fixed. I liked it. it. I was like, you go Don. (laughs) But it was one of those things where for me, and I don't think a lot of people know this, that a podcast, especially if you're being produced by somebody is direct reflection on their company. So you sound good. We sound good. Um, so me, I have a vested interest to make sure you have the best product out there. And, and so I think f- for you, what's nice is it's funny because I always would get, uh, if an episode's really good, I always get a text in the morning because Lori's about two hours ahead of me. I'm in the mountain time zone. She's in the Eastern time zone. And I'll get a text like at four, four thirty in the morning because Lori is like listening to an ad or listening to a guest or something. And she goes, oh, this sounds really good. Cause Lori will listen to it on her walks. And so I always know, you know, something's going on, but you know, usually how we do things is we'll upload our episode on a, like a Tuesday. And then I'll do a handoff to Jenny, who is the person that takes care of the back end of the site. Um, and she'll upload the show notes, stuff like that. And then from there, I'll go ahead and at midnight that next, that night on Wednesday night, Thursday morning, I'll go in, make sure all the ads are put in there right, make sure everything looks good, make sure everything posted good, and then we're good the next day. 
but the funny thing was we we had one where we had to redo it and this is the first time we had to redo it with sounder and, and this was one of the hiccups we had with them they've since fixed the issue but we had to re-up an episode because it went in wrong and then Lori goes why does it say placeholder why does it say that and i'm like oh I, and then there's a couple of times we've had to talk where i go placeholders when i put it i upload the the audio and we put label things placeholder because then Jenny takes over and puts the show notes and everything in. So the placeholder is just for her to hold the spot because you can't save it on sounder without filling out a couple things. And so when we have to fill out those couple of things, it's usually this placeholder. The one thing I want to talk about is when you, when you actually, we drop that episode and you listen to it. Is there a relief for you when you go, I've put, and let's, you probably spend for an hour long episode. I would say you probably spend seven to eight hours of prep and everything else and getting everything ready for a one hour episode. Yeah. So before I answer, so I'm going to answer that, but before I do, so after we record, I don't look, I don't listen to it. I, I upload the audio and video for you and Jenny and I peace out. I'm like, I don't want to see it. I trust you to edit it. I don't listen to it before it goes live. That, that's my choice. Now I could, if I wanted to, but I'm like, nope, I trust you that you are going to put, edit it perfectly, like to the best of your ability. And I, the first time I hear it is the same episode that any one of you can hear. And like Don said, I usually do it in the morning. But before we get to that point, before it goes live, I then have to put together, take the show notes, which I compile from my prep questions. And then I turn that into basically like a blog post that lives on the podcast page. So when I say, Hey, you can have links to anything we talked about in our show notes, you could go into your podcast app and then click on the link to connect up with our guests or any of the things that we talked about. But it also has to be in a in a legible format that I could have it as a blog post for people that still enjoy reading the content. So I choose to do all of that. I don't outsource that part of the business. So every week, and I usually do it on Tuesdays, Mondays or Tuesdays, but it usually comes out that Tuesday night. I sit down and I probably spend a solid two hours taking these show notes and drafting them into like a story format or an article format, making sure not only is the copy and the grammar right, but I have all of the guests links that they talked about, like their links to connect up with them. But then I also take notes. So if they reference something in an episode, I want to make that I say, oh, we'll connect to that. I have to make sure that I connect up to that. So I'm constantly doing research. If they make a book recommendation, I have to then go pull that link and pull it. So there's all of these moving parts. So every week, even after I'm done recording, I still have another two to three hours of work each week for that upcoming episode. So that's another layer to my kind of post-production. But I guess, I, I don't know if relief is the right word because I have confidence. I'm glad that when it goes out, I'm like, I always like to listen to it before I promote it. So I'm glad. And then there's a whole like, we have to, re, we have to send it to the guest and we send the links and we promote it on social media and we have to market it. Because again, we want to get new listeners and we want to remind people that don't subscribe, that don't have that automatic download to check out our episode. That's where Courtney comes in. And you guys heard Courtney last week. And part of her job is each week to promote that episode on social and send that to the guests so that they can promote it on social. So we can continue kind of the wave of you know, getting people, the ripple effect of getting people to listen and download the episode or stream it. So uh, I know we're going to have to take a break soon, but before we go to the break, let's, let's talk about the new, the new component that you've just added recently. Well, I think we're what, maybe 10, 12 episodes into doing this is video. (laughs) 
let's talk about that a little bit. Let's talk about how that evolved from where we are now to where you're so comfortable behind the camera. So one of the things that I absolutely loved and still love about podcasting is you don't have to look pretty. You just have to sound good and intelligent. You don't, you could have your hair in a messy bun. You don't have to have makeup on. You could be in your pajamas. I mean, obviously when I recorded in a studio, I wasn't in my pajamas, but I could be in like workout clothes. I didn't have to be dressed up because no one was looking at me. They were just listening. So I had to make sure that I was on point with what I was saying and my voice was good. But what I look like was never part of the equation. But you were like, you need to incorporate video And I get it from a strategic SEO standpoint. You have people that consume information differently and you have people that like to read it, people that like to listen to it, people that like to watch it. And all of my reasons for not doing video were completely selfish and shallow. I just didn't want to be on video. Like I just didn't want to have to put on makeup and like look halfway decent. And that was it. It wasn't that I was uncomfortable or scared or whatever. I just was a little on the lazy side. So I finally broke down and said, uh, I'll agree and do video. And, I mean, it, it only took yeah. a couple of promptings. It didn't take a long time. Well, in my mind, it seemed like there was a lot more coercion on your part, but maybe that was just all in my mind. It, it wasn't, but um, I mean, I think we had the conversation probably the first month into me taking over was. Oh, you brought it up really early. And I'm like, yeah. slow your roll, bro. You yeah. definitely brought it up. And then you would talk about how Jamie was doing video and Jamie's doing video and we're helping Jamie with her studio. Jamie's our mutual friend and one yes. of Don's clients who entered and Jamie introduced me to Don. And you were like, well, Jamie's setting up her home studio and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, well, good for Jamie. <laughs> Usually that helps with you if I poke you a little bit. And I think it's more of just, you know, hopefully I do a good job of having us take a direction that I think we need to take without coming out and saying we need to do this. Oh, yeah. You are. I'm still curious what your Enneagram type is, but that's like another conversation. Yeah, because you definitely are not like I'm as subtle as attack and you definitely are what way more like smooth in your delivery with things. You're never like, we have to do this where that's usually my approach. Well, I think now that you've done it though, I think, I think you're starting to feel more comfortable with it. And I think it's good. I think, I think the hard part though, is just making sure that the guests read that the fact that they're going to be on video. Now, some guests are like, I didn't know that. And you're like, what's in the, it's in the emails that we've gone back and forth with. It's there it's, in the intake. It's so tiring. And I love yeah. our guests and I get yeah. it. People are busy. And I know there's been plenty of things that I'm sure I skim over when people send me stuff, but we tell people all the time, it's video and audio. We tell people all the time, if you have a standalone mic, great, don't go out and buy one, but at the very least, please wear headphones because of the sound quality so many people are like, oh, do I need headphones? So, I mean, God I think we said ad nauseum when we actually get on a call and it's automatic where I'll go, I'll actually let them talk and then I'll go, can you at least get some like earbuds or something so you can sound even better? But usually on the calls, I'm the heavy, which is the way it should be because in order for them to have a good conversation with you, they should feel comfortable with you and not have an adversarial kind of a thing because I'm the one that has to go. You need to do this. You need to do it now, please. Well, your definite. Okay. So that's the other thing. Your definition of what the heavy is, is not like to me, you're super nice and kind. You're you, you don't bark orders. You're, I mean, first of all, obviously everybody that's listening can hear how soothing your voice is. You are you, there's no level of intimidation from you. Like you say, you're the heavy, you, you're just like, you're like a tour guide for these people in the best possible way. You're just walking them through this journey. I think if they saw me in full beard form, they would be so nervous and go, I'm sorry, sir. Yes, we will take care of (laughs) it. No, but I think here's the thing. I, I, I hope people are understanding that it's what you get every week is not something that just 
happens. I mean, there's a lot of work that goes into putting, let me take that back. There's a lot of work that goes into a good podcast. There's an extreme amount of work that goes into a great podcast. Preparation that you hear and the smoothness that you hear didn't happen by accident. Lori's worked really hard to get out the best product possible. And I'm just an extension of that. And so is everybody else that works behind the scenes of the podcast. Our job is to make sure that vision is executed and given the best way possible because of the work Lori puts into it. And I know sometimes she'll tell me I'm like your hardest client. I'm like, you're like my easiest client because I don't have to do a lot of handholding with, with her. Uh, I have some clients that I have to do a lot of handholding with. Um, and her, I don't have to do a lot of things with like, um, some clients I have to work with how they do interviews. You know, we have to work on these things. And there's some clients that I have that work really hard to do that. Uh, Lori's a really good natural at it. And I know there was a joke at the beginning where I said, I don't want to give you a compound question. Um, and she goes, well, I do it all the time, but that's Lori's style. Lori does it just because, and you can tell when she's interviewing a guest, how much she enjoys the subject matter is because those compound questions become like quadruple compound questions. Like, cause <laughs> so she, she can't get out. The, she can't get out the questions fast enough because she just wants to have all this information from that person. And you can always tell when she's excited about it. And I think, I think our numbers are showing it that the guests that we're having on more and the subject matter we're talking about more, you have a, a lot more vested interest. Not that you didn't before. It's just, you're really into it. And I think that was one of the things we had um, because we do a quarterly talk and then we do the year talk where we talk about what we want to accomplish this coming year. What, what are the things? And you have to learn to roll with it because what we started in 2020 didn't end up being what our, what ended up being our editorial calendar for that year. It, it got smashed because that's life. Mm -hmm. I think you can tell when, you know, you're, you're into it and it, and it shows it, 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 it comes across as you're speaking. So. Well, anyway. thank you. And again, and mm -hmm. I just want to say, you know, if there's people that are listening, I clearly invest a lot of time and resources to have somebody of Don's caliber to produce my show. And like I said, he's on every episode to make sure our guests sound good and, and all the things. Not everybody does that, nor does everybody have to. I think it's all about what you want for your business and your brand and, and how you're using your podcast. For me, when I first started my podcast, I didn't know what my expectation was going to be. But over the past several years that I've been doing it, it's become something that I really enjoy. I think I'm sort of good at it. And it has since become, the podcast has become a core component of Simply Be Organized, of the brand. So as such, I invest a lot of time and resources. And that's why we seek out sponsorships and collaborations with other you know, people and businesses that can help us grow and share this message. For somebody else, they might just have a podcast because it's a fun hobby and they do it themselves. And that's fine too. But for our purposes, you know, this is part of our revenue stream. This is part of our business. This is part of the brand. So that's why we spend all this time putting together thoughtful and comprehensive editorial calendars and debriefs and looking at our analytics and saying, this is a popular topic, we should do more of this, or we should maybe focus in on this direction and asking our community, what do you want to hear? What are the things that you want to, um, that you want to learn about or know? And so we can deliver that because again, for us, this is a part of our offering in terms of the umbrella of SBO. So I want, hopefully this was a helpful behind the scenes curtain for all of you guys like pulling it back. I think it was. And to, to your point, people hire companies like mine when they want to go to the next, to the very top level. And so that's what you, you made that change where, and we talked about it, you know, when we first, I remember I was in Taos, New Mexico, talking to you on the phone in a car when we had our initial conversation about making the change. And I think it took like three or four months before that happened. But our initial conversation was about 45 minutes. 
I was hopefully just asking the question, you know, answering your questions as you, as you told me, as you came up with, with questions and I was trying to answer them the best I could. And then I know, you know, one of the things that we talked about was sound quality and how that was going to sound, you know, and, and things like that. And people know that what she gets is a premium service and th that's what you're getting when you go to this level. And so what she's giving you is, is not, she was kind of selling it down a little bit, I think, but she spends a lot of time and a lot of money to give you the best product possible. You know, we're just an extension of that. And we, what we try to do is every week, like I said, is execute that vision that she's given us and she does the hard work. I mean, we just do this stuff behind the scenes, but. Well, that's debatable. Um, and thank you. I don't know. And it's funny yeah. because I will say there have been a couple, not even a whole handful, but a couple of episodes where our schedules didn't align. And I'm like, oh, I'll record without you. And now you're like, no, because first of all, it's evident in the sound quality that you're, you're trying to clean up my mess. It's like me going to a client and them going, we'll just get our own organizing bins. And I'm trying to make it work with their like dollar store bins. And I'm like, no offense to the dollar store. I like the dollar store, but you know, I'm trying to make it work. And it's like, not really the right thing. This is not the quality that I need. And I, now you're like, yeah, no, you're not allowed to record without me there. That was funny. Cause we just, this is the first time we've ever recorded on a Saturday, a Saturday. And that was like, I think last Saturday. Yeah. And the funny thing was, is you're like, oh, if you can't make it, I'll just, I'll just do it. And I was like, no, I'll make the time. Don't worry. I'll be there on Saturday. <laughs> I will be there. Just tell me what time. And it has, it's nothing against you and it's nothing against my clients. It's just, for me, it's two things. One, you paid for a service and we don't want to make sure we're not there. And two, it's in our both interest for me to be there to make sure everything goes, goes well. To be honest with you, I don't have to do a lot of interacting with you during the, the episode itself when we're doing the interview. Um, I think maybe a handful of times I've sent you a, a message going, saying something about A, B, and C. Lori's such a pro that she can get the best out of, of and I think you've only been stumped a couple of times where I've had to go, well, let's try something different here. People that do a podcast will know this, but people who are getting into it need to know that not every guest is a good guest. And it doesn't matter how po polished they are, because we've had podcasters on that have been probably some of our worst guests as far as interviews go, because you have some people that just like I'm doing right now, continually talking and they're not really saying anything. And then you have some people that it's like pulling teeth, like they'll go, so what do you think of this, this new thing? Is it cool? And they'll go, yes. <laughs> you know, like, I need a little bit more well, fortunately, yes. fortunately I could talk to a wall. So I, yeah. I tend to go on, but there, yeah, there are, there are a few, not many. Most of our guests are pretty good and engaging and want to be there and, yeah. you know, make yeah. it fun. All right. Before we take our last break, I'm going to actually give a call to action for everybody. Oh, here we go. Is that okay? I mean, sure. I the uh, it's, I, it's your show. I know. I, I know sometimes you forget. If you, well, first of all, thanks for listening to this. Hopefully I, we didn't bore you and gave you some insight into kind of like what's going on. But our show grows through word of mouth and through people listening. That's our analytics. So when people share it, people listen to it, people rate and review it, doesn't really... We people like street cred. So I know just like you would look at an Amazon review or you would say, oh, this show has five stars or you would go on Rotten Tomatoes and look and see what people are saying about a movie. That's what people do for our podcasts. So I recently had a friend say, how do I like your podcast? I'm like, well, you don't really like click the like button, but you could click the five star button. And if you want to even go the extra step and rate a review, like that's awesome too. If you guys want to support our show, that's the best way to do it is just support us in whatever app you're listening to. Um, if you want to engage with us, we're on Facebook at this organized life podcast. You can, that's our private group. Um, you can pop in there and ask questions, um, comments, make recommendations for guests or topics that you want to talk about. 
I don't want to be talking to dead air. So I love talking to people and knowing that you guys are on the other side. So feel free to connect up with us any way that you're comfortable wherever you're hanging out. So that's my ask for you guys. And if you're thinking of starting a podcast, call Don because he's the best in the business. Thank you. You did forget one thing though. Oh, what I forget. If you are watching, listening to on us on YouTube, please mm-hmm. like and subscribe. Oh, yeah. See, I'm like and subscribe. Yeah, YouTube. Not my thing, but because I'm old. But yes, that is true for our YouTubers. Like and subscribe, people. Like and subscribe. All right. Final hot mess minute break and then come back and guess who's going in the hot seat? My dog? Nope. You. All right, Don. So this is not your first rodeo. You know that we ask all of our guests a few questions. Recently, what is, it doesn't have to be recently, actually. Since you're so inspiring and so informative, can you share with our listeners a book or could be a podcast that has been informational, transformational, inspiring to you that you want to share with our listeners? Well, I listen to a lot of podcasts. Okay. Um, and um, I could go, I could go chalk and just name all of my clients. I was, you could. I could, and I should. I will say that I'm liking a couple nerdy things. Um, there's a couple history podcasts that I listen to. There is one from NPR, uh, the TED Talk Radio Hour is something I listen to pretty much every week. And I really, I used to listen to them all the time. And then I kind of like petered off. Maybe I'll pick them back up again. But I, I do have to say that I'll actually highlight two of my clients besides you. Of course, if you're not listening to Lori's show, please get out there and listen to that show. The fearless business podcast, which Jamie is, is on there and she's on video. That was a poke at you. Their content is actually starting is a change up and they're starting to get back to their roots and and things. and, And that's really good. Um, another friend of yours, who is also a client of mine, is Diana's show, which mm-hmm. is the um, Be Real podcast. And I like that one particularly because of the messaging and the things they talk about, um, because they talk about mental health. But they also talk about things that are going on there. So, And then I have an interesting one that is coming out. I know you only asked for one, but um, That's okay. I have a new client. Um, he's a branding guy for Cowan which is an international branding agency. And they're doing some, some neat things where they're going to talk about branding and how to brand your stuff. And he's one of my overseas clients. So those are the ones that I know we've had this conversation where I'm getting up at like three in the morning to do. Yeah, I'm like, why, is, why, why you sound so tired? And you're like, yeah. uh, I have my overseas client. I was up at three recording. Yeah. And so for me, once I'm up, I'm up. So there's so no what's the name of that, that show? So I can put it in the show notes. It's going to be uh, the White Label Project, and that has not gone live. I think the launch date is going to be uh, first week of May. Um, oh, but it's still, well, that's, yeah. then it, this this is going to drop, I believe, the second week of May. So it'll so, be perfect timing. Yeah, it'll be it'll be live. So look up the White Label Project podcast, and it's it's a new podcast that I think is going to be really interesting because one of the cool things, and I talked to you about this, and this is just a real quick thing. I tell Lori she needs to do video to promote the show and and just do candid moments. This client records himself doing things before the show starts. So he had one where he talked about his son, about Minecraft. So we do a 30 to 45 second snippet of that. Uh, he did one where he's riding his bike up a hill because he's an avid biker. Well, he's a marketing guy. So he's got yeah. all of these like creative ideas. Yeah. I'm an organizer. I'm like yeah. analytical data person. <laughs> But yes, we, we could do a blooper show, but there's not a lot of bloopers. Oh, for me? Yeah. We don't really not. have a lot. Mm-mm. No, no. And there's not a lot of flubs. So I have some clients that there's a lot of flubs that I could spend like four or five episodes just putting a, a blooper reel together. But the, there's not one for that. But to answer your question, those are okay. some of the podcasts that I've right, we'll link up. To, we'll link up to those. Okay. And then my last two questions. Mm-hmm. Where, and I think I know the answer to one of them because we were talking about it, but I could be wrong. 
right now in your life, where do you feel the most organized and where do you feel like a bit of a hot mess? Well, definitely my office because you can see it on the video. Um, but there's a reason for it. We had this talk before the show. Yes. I have redoing the office with a new desk and new dressers and stuff. I mean, new drawers, dressers, drawers. And my stuff has gotten in late, so I haven't been able to fix it. So my stuff behind me looks like a just a garbage scale. I think what I'm really super organized and really good at is the, the one thing that I love doing more than anything else. And, and that's being a dad. I, I think, knew it. I was going to yeah. say. Yes. <laughs> I, th- I think I have, I think I have that down pretty good. Um, my boys are pretty, pretty important to me and, and the, the thing I love doing the most. So um, I would say that's my most put together. I'm a train wreck everywhere else, but with my boys, um, I, I think I'm doing a pretty good job there. At least I'd like to think so. You're, you're bang up dad and producer as well. So you well, have it together in yeah. both of those areas. I can't suck there because you know, that, that allows them to do all those other things. Exactly. So if I sucked at that, that would, um, I think I'm a pretty good, I think I like to, I think work wise, I'm pretty good there too. So yeah, there you go. Don, thanks for coming on. Thank you for putting your video on for me. I know how you're much welcome. You like it. No, I, I, I don't think it. they realize it's usually you'll see a black screen with our logo on it. That's I expected it. That's, to be talking to the black screen today. Yeah. So. And, and I almost said, you know what? And we said, well, we'll make jokes about it. I was like, no, you know what? This is your show. This is what we're going to do. I will come on and show my my mess of things. So. I appreciate it. And You're I welcome. appreciate you. you. And I appreciate all of you out there who tune in week after week. And if this is your first time listening to our show, welcome. And as I said before, please do yourself a favor, do me a favor, click the subscribe button. So new episodes will get downloaded each and every week. You can also go back and listen to any of our back catalog. There's over 200 episodes in there. You could peruse by topic, guest, you name it. And if you're on social media, we're pretty much everywhere at Simply Be Organized, but we do have our Facebook group called This Organized Life Podcast, and we would love for you to join us there. So until next week, I am Lori Plow. Oh, and don't forget, tune in next week because we'll be again behind the scenes and we are going to be going behind the scenes of our on-site clients. So that'll be fun. And Gail will be joining me for that one. So make sure you tune in. Until next week, I'm Lori Plow. Peace out.